Continuing with this month of love, let's take a look at another manga adaptation of another somewhat unconventional love story. Well, if you could even call a silent voice a love story, maybe it's more like a depression story. Today's subject, on the other hand, is definitely a love story. A quirky, potentially uncomfortable, yet honestly kind of charming love story. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about After the Rain, the 2018 film adaptation of the popular manga about a teenage girl falling in love with a 40-something middle-aged man. Oh boy, maybe some context is needed here. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room so we can all breathe a little easier as we proceed. Though the premise of this narrative might feel somewhat icky, when considering the situation under the lens of Japanese-ness, it's perhaps a little less creepy, as a general simplification of an idea that can be extremely individually based. The idea of younger women marrying older men isn't necessarily frowned upon in Japanese society. Considering many young men enter the workforce directly out of school, and typically must work longer hours in order to please the higher ups, Oftentimes, they have less time than their older counterparts who have already secured a job and worked in a company for a decade or longer. We say this because the idea of a high school aged girl falling for a man in his 40s might seem strange to some of our viewers. And while we aren't saying that it's right or wrong, we simply mean to bring to the attention of these viewers that the main point of this narrative does not seem to centralize around this concept, and thus, in our analysis of the film, we will shy away from making any judgments about the situation presented. We believe that this film is trying to say something else entirely, but we'll get to that shortly. The film adaptation produced by Toho was adapted from a 10-volume manga, which ran between 2014 and 2018, in monthly big comic spirits and weekly big comic spirits. At the time, this was the only writing credit to Jun Muyazuki's name. Her follow-up, Kowloon Generic Romance, only just began serialization in November 2019. Thanks to the success of the original manga, an anime produced by Wit Studio was broadcast on Fuji TV between January and March 2018. This version was directed by Ayumu Watanabe, who has worked on some other anime TV shows, but more importantly, tons of Doraemon. Only a few months after the release of this anime, today's subject finally hit the silver screen. This was another situation we went into mostly blind. I had watched the anime prior to viewing the film, while Eli was starting from scratch with this movie. Comparatively, for the most part, the anime and the film follow each other's major beats. Of course, with the anime there is more opportunity for characterization, such as with the characters Ryosuke, the sex-crazed chef, and Takashi, the infatuated goofball. Generally speaking, the film can be viewed without prior knowledge of the anime, as one of us specifically had not watched the anime but was still able to follow the story without any missteps. We cannot, however, vouch for the continuity in regards to the manga. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on this. The film adaptation saw the return of director Akira Nagai, who two years prior had released If Cats Disappear From The World. Overall, this was Nagai's fourth movie, though prior to working in feature film, he had worked in advertising. This clearly shows, thanks to the flashy nature of After the Rain, with a distinct washed-out color palette, drone shots, and impeccable framing. The screenplay for this version of After the Rain was penned by Riko Sakaguchi, who had previously worked on a number of television dramas as well as a few notable films we've discussed in the past. You know, just a little one called The Tale of Princess Kaguya, as well as the Ghibli expatriate film Mary and the Witch's Flower. So yeah, Sakaguchi had some clout behind her name going into this one, just like Nagai. So you might be asking, how does this movie get from point A to point B? As in, why do we see one teenage girl, Akira, fall in love with a middle-aged man, Masami? Long story short, Akira runs track at school until she falls on hard times with an injury. This means that she simply cannot run, and thus spends more of what would be her extracurricular time at a local restaurant where she works part-time. Slowly, she grows distant from her peers on the track team, and becomes closer to those working at the restaurant. In turn, Akira falls for Masami, her manager, the bulk of the film's runtime, then, deals with Akira struggling with her love affair, learning to cope with it, and questioning whether she should reveal this to Masami or not. Two major points spring to mind after viewing After the Rain. That it's an exploration of coping with one's teenage years, 
and that it examines how we deal with hardship. In this view, it's not entirely a love story. Let's get into that. First, After the Rain is largely about being a teenager. This in some way supplements the love narrative of the film, as it explains away Akira's feelings when we consider that love is both fleeting and misplaced during these awkward growing years. This shows how, as Akira feels distanced from her peers, she grows close to a divorced 40-something man in spite of her being a mere child. In this way, we're witnessing through this narrative what could be described as a quarter-life crisis. Most plots we might find like this would be concerned primarily with the opposite, and would be told from the reverse perspective. In other words, most would be about the older man in a midlife crisis who falls for a pubescent girl. By inverting the weird situation, After the Rain avoids most awkwardness. What strangeness it does retain is played comically, making the film much less uncomfortable than it could be. At least a few times, we're reminded that we're seeing this from the idealistic view of the young woman who thinks that she could realistically get with and stay with a man of Masami's age. We're allowed at times to forget that Masami is even a real person, with his own thoughts and wants and needs. We're made to see him how Akira sees him for the most part, only to break this perception and remind us that she's still a kid. As a sort of meta-commentary, we see that a co-worker from the restaurant pines for Akira, just as she does for Masami. The young man mirrors for us, though remaining imperceptible to Akira, her own misplaced affection. Again, this is given a different gravity thanks to it being from her perspective. She genuinely has duped herself into thinking she could handle a relationship with Masami, without even asking him his desires, mind you. Yet she seems more or less repulsed when this young man treats her the same way that she's treating Masami. On the other hand, we have perhaps the film's true meaning. After the Rain seems largely concerned with how everyone overcomes strife as individuals, redefines themselves as a result of it, betters their lives in the long run, and how all of this affects the lives of those around us. This is explored through the knock-on effect of Akira's injury. She gets hurt, can't run, grows apart from her friends and teammates, and looks for new meaning outside of her original thing. You know how everyone has a thing, whatever it is, that helps define you in simple terms for both yourself and for others? Like, when people ask who you are, people are able to say, oh, they're the guy who makes really good biscuits. Or she's the girl who produces the bangin'est EDM. Track was Akita's thing. And now that she's lost it, she can't help but feel lost in life. What we're getting at here is how After the Rain is a relative movie. The old relatives. It's about finding yourself in a forced period of transition in life, and needing to redefine yourself. It doesn't exactly feel good, and it requires a lot of self-reflection, sometimes experimentation, and often pain. This turns out to really help define the movie, by which we mean how Akira is struggling to define herself. This message comes into focus chiefly when we see, spoilers here, that Akira finally confesses her feelings after quite a bit of time hemming and hawing on what to do. And then, what happens? Well, Masami simply doesn't allow Akira's advances. He expresses what we've perhaps been thinking, that there's no realistic way for this to work out in a healthy manner for either of them. Masami has the presence of mind as the older, more put-together of the two, to tell Akira that he is a 40-something divorced manager of a small restaurant while she's a high school student who's hit a small snag in her life, but who will move on and up in life. Her leg will heal, she'll graduate high school and likely go to university, and she'll find a man more her speed. Masami is able to say this because he's been through this transitional period and come out on the other side. He's been through a divorce, and he's found his own personal place in the world as the manager of this restaurant. Masami is happy, and he's bold enough to ask Akira if she would actually be happy with him, something she hasn't been asked directly thanks to her inability to even admit her feelings truthfully. After the Rain is, as we set up top, a bizarre love story, by which we mean to say it's not even really a love story. It's more a portrait of a quarter-life crisis that captures effectively how fractured we can feel when we reach these periods of change in our lives. It's a quirky, funny, genuinely affecting portrait of this type of moment, when we're forced to redefine ourselves in order to fit in with the world, and in order to understand ourselves better. Give this one a look if you haven't already, and be sure to give it a chance if you've already seen the anime or read the manga. 
Also, be sure to let us know in the comments below what you think of After the Rain.